Hello, Mighty Companion. This is Earl Purdy, and I want to welcome you to Hardcore Course in Miracles, a course in miracles, a course in correct perception. And we're going to be talking about what is your function? You're on the planet. What is your real function? What is the function of a demonstrator of love? What is the function of someone who wants to demonstrate the truth in a higher way? What is the function of the teacher of God? What is the, which is the same as saying, what is the function of a demonstrator of love? What is your function? What are you supposed to do? Well, we're going to talk about that, and we're going to cover that in A Course in Miracles. We're going to start out with a song from A Course in Miracles that's based on A Course in Miracles that would allow us to get centered and allow us to tune in by Brother John Christmas. And here we go on our incredible Course in Miracles journey. So good to see you, mighty companion. So good to see you. Open your mind and be open to hearing some things that maybe you've never heard before. We're going to go deep. This is especially for anyone, but especially Course in Miracles students. We're going to talk about the function. What is your function?
Ah, Brother John Christmas at, at johnchristmas.com. If you want to get that music and you want to get it for free, go to www.johnchristmas, johnchristmas.com. And you'll get a chance to get a lot of wonderful music that he does that's based on A Course in Miracles. You know, there's not words, there are not words to express the gratitude that I feel for you and the gratitude that I have that you are actually willing to take the time to tune in to Hardcore Course in Miracles. Hardcore Course in Miracles on Thursdays, Hardcore Course in Miracles is especially for Course in Miracles students who are studying the Course in Miracles. Even though I welcome anyone to watch because it's no accident, you could get something very valuable whether you're a hardcore Course in Miracles student or not. But I do it, especially on my Thursdays, hardcore Course in Miracles for people who are studying the Course in Miracles. I would I like to take the 40 plus years that I've been teaching and studying the Course in Miracles to save you time. Do you know that the Course in Miracles says the purpose of a relationship is to save time? So if you're in a relationship that's not speeding you, speeding you along to more love, to more joy, to more happiness, and to more peace, then you might want to reconsider the value of that relationship. Because the Course in Miracles says that a relationship that's valuable is a relationship that's helping you. Helping you do what? Helping you remove the blocks. The blocks to love, the blocks to peace, the blocks to guilt. You know, the blocks, you want, you want a relationship that's helping you get rid of the blocks to your love and your peace. We're gonna be on page 19 in the Manual for Teachers in the Course in Miracles Blue Book. The Foundation for Inner Peace version of A Course in Miracles. Page 19 in the Manual for Teachers. The Course in Miracles has is three books in one. It's a text, a workbook for students that gives you lessons to do every day so that you can apply The Course in Miracles to your day-to-day um, -day experience because I, my emphasis is on the practical application of the course. And you have the manual for teachers. And that is all contained within the one book. One thing I've learned being a teacher of the Course in Miracles for as long as I have and a student of the Course in Miracles is that one of the things that can make studying the Course in Miracles difficult is not following the instructions that the Course in Miracles itself gives about the way to practice the Course in Miracles. So at the beginning of the workbook and in introduction of the workbook, the Course in Miracles gives you guidelines to use. And it says, remember only this. You need not believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. I'd like you to take a deep breath right now. You've probably been out in the world and you might have been even listening to your own ego voice and realize that this is supposed to be an opportunity to get out of the concerns and worries of the world and to hear the way that you can get past those. So remember only this, you need not believe the ideas you need not accept the ideas. You need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas, you may actively resist some of the ideas. Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe. Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe. Some of the ideas may be different from what you believe. 
Some of the ideas in the Course in Miracles may startle you. I may say some things from the Course in Miracles that do what? I may say some things from the Course in Miracles that startle you. You are not asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all. I don't analyze the Course in Miracles. The Course in Miracles says to analyze it is to destroy the meaning of it. So I don't analyze the Course in Miracles. If you want to know that the Course in Miracles works, the Course in Miracles says, rather than analyze the Course in Miracles, use the ideas. Use the ideas because the Course in Miracles is working first and foremost with your perception. It's trying to teach you how to see things differently so that you can give yourself peace ultimately in every situation in your life. And that's going to come through a change of perception. Their use of the ideas, their use will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. Using the ideas will show you that the ideas are true. Analyzing the ideas will not show you that the ideas are true. Um, <clears throat> but if you use the ideas, you will see that the ideas work. I call myself the divine repetition teacher because the Course in Miracles teaches you to remember the ideas. It says that if you remember the ideas and then apply the ideas the way you're being told to apply the ideas, you will get the peace and the joy and the happiness that the Course in Miracles promises. But you have to use the interpretations that the Course in Miracles, use the instructions that the Course in Miracles is giving you. So we're going to cover what is the function of the teacher of God? What's the function of the demonstrators of love? So if you use these ideas that I'm going to give you from A Course in Miracles, these ideas will show you that these ideas are true. Page 19 in the Manual for Teachers, <clears throat> the function of the teacher of God, the function of the teacher of love. Now the first thing I'm going to do I'm just going to, in my own way, I'm going to read the paragraph. I'm going to read the paragraph, and then we're going to go back through it so that we can hear what were the instructions. <clears throat> if the patient must change his mind, if a person has to change their mind in order to be healed, what does the teacher of God do? What do you do? If, if the people around you have to change their mind in order for them to be happy, in order to be healed, what does the teacher of God do? You, can you change a person's mind for them? Can you change a patient's mind for them? Certainly not. So what do you need to do if the people around you need to change their mind in order to be happy, in order to be healed, what do you do? Well, can you change another person's mind for them? The Course in Miracles says, certainly not. You can't change another person's mind for them. So what do you do if you can't change another person's mind for them? Do you know that for those already willing to change their mind, what do you do for people who are already willing to change your mind? What do you do? for those who already are on their spiritual path or trying to improve themselves or trying to become more loving? What do you do with people who are already on their path? The Course says, for those already willing to change their minds, you don't have any function except to rejoice with them. So your function for people who are already trying to improve themselves, you don't have any function with them other than to be happy with them. So everybody who's on the same path, everybody who's on their own spiritual path, everybody that's trying to improve themselves, just be happy with them. Just be happy with them. Because people who have decided to demonstrate love, people who have decided to try to improve themselves and be on a spiritual path of some type, they become teachers of God with you. They are, they are becoming demonstrators of love with you. Remember, God is love. Love is God. A teacher is a demonstrator. So what do you do with people who are already on their path 
even if it's a different path from yours. You rejoice with them. You be happy with them. But there's a, something that I'd like to make you aware of. There's something I'd like you to be open-minded about. Do you know that you have a more specific function for those who don't understand the truth, for those who don't understand what healing is? The Course in Miracles teaches that healing is the undoing of fear, that everything is ultimately caused by fear and guilt, whether it's a physical condition, emotional condition, or mental condition, whatever's causing people unhappiness, it's being caused by some form of fear. So when the Course in Miracles says healing, it's talking about the end of fear. So you have a more specific function for those who don't understand the truth. You have a more specific function for your friends and relatives and relationships with people who do not understand what healing is. Now, how can you tell when you're talking to a person that doesn't know what healing is? Well, these patients do not realize they've chosen sickness. So a person who doesn't understand what healing is, is a person that does not realize that they've chosen whatever sickness or conflict or fear or anger or state of mind that they're in. So a person, so a person that doesn't understand what healing is, is a person that doesn't realize that they have chosen sickness. They have chosen any form of lack of peace. So a person who doesn't know what the truth is a person that thinks that they are a victim of whatever it is that they're experiencing. Remember that A Course in Miracles teaches that the way that you feel is coming from the meaning that you're giving things. The way that you feel is coming from your interpretations of the situation that you're in right now. No matter what that situation is, your, your happiness or unhappiness is coming from the way that you are seeing it. So a person that is, a person that doesn't know what healing is, is a person that doesn't realize that they are the ones that's determining what they see that a person that doesn't realize that they are the ones that's giving everything all the meaning that they're seeing in the situation or relationship. And so therefore, they are the one that's creating the way that they feel. How you feel is coming from the meaning that you're giving things. The way that you feel right now in this moment is coming from the way that you are seeing things. The way that you feel right now about anything that you're feeling right now about anything is coming from the meaning the interpretation that you're giving to that situation so do you know that you have a very very specific function for those who don't understand what healing is so you have a very specific function with people who don't know what healing is. They don't realize that they have chosen the situation, the way that they perceive the situation that they're in right now. On the contrary, most people who don't know, people who don't know what healing is, they believe that the sickness has chosen them. A person who doesn't know what healing is believes that they are at the effect level of everything that happens. So a person that actually doesn't know the truth is a person that believes that things come to them that they did not choose or did not order at some level. And they're not even open-minded about that. Like some people, if you even try to tell them in any way that they are responsible for how they're feeling and they're responsible for how they're thinking and that uh, the situation that they're in, that they're in and that they perceive themselves in, that they actually chose that, that they actually are making their own perception of it. They're not open to that. The body tells them what to do and they obey. So sickness is not just a physical illness. Sickness is any form of lack of peace about anything. So most people believe that when they get sick, that, they have, that their mind has nothing to do with it. You're unhappy, that's something that happened outside yourself, you don't have anything to do with it. So these are people that have 
no idea how insane it is to believe that a child of God is a victim, that a child of God has no power. A child of God creates through thought. A child of God creates through thought, feeling, emotions, and beliefs. Your conscious thoughts and your subconscious thoughts are all creating your perceived reality. Everything that you are seeing is coming from your own thoughts. Because the Course says that if, if a person even suspected that they were the creators of their experience, they would be healed. If we even suspected that we are responsible for what we see, if we even suspected that we are the ones that's choosing the feelings that we experience, if we even suspected that we decide upon every goal that we would achieve, if we even suspected that everything that seems to happen to us, we ask for and receive as we have asked. The Course of Miracles says, if we even really just even suspected it, we would be healed. <clears throat> so what did that, fir that first paragraph tell us? Because the name of the game is re repetition and remembering. Okay, if a, person, if, if a person has to change their mind in order to be happy, what do we do with people who are already on the path, already studying, already meditating, already trying to improve themselves, already trying to be more loving? We don't have a function with those people except to be happy with them. What do we do with people that think that they are victims and don't know that they are unlimited spiritual beings having a human experience? You are an unlimited spiritual being having a human experience. You are an unlimited human, you are an unlimited spiritual being having a human experience. You are mind, in mind, you are awareness, you are consciousness, you are more than a body. You create through your thoughts, feelings, emotions, and beliefs. They all create how you see things, they all create your experience. Most people don't believe that. Most people have been taught that that's not true. They think that everything that's happening to them is being created by something outside of themselves and they're not even open-minded about that. Their body tells them what to do and how to feel and they obey. The average person doesn't have any idea that that's totally insane. If a person even suspects that they are the ones that create their experience, they would be healed. But most people suspect nothing. To most people, the separation seems to be quite real. To most people, it absolutely looks like you're separate from me and I'm separate from you and we're separate from each other and we're separate. It, that's the way it, the separation seems real. So what do you do with the people who believe that they are separate, people who believe that they are victims, people who project, people who blame? Well, to them, God's teachers come. So you're in the presence of the people around you who are asleep. You're there to represent another choice that they've forgotten. So why are you around your friends, relatives, partners, relationships? You're around them if you're a demonstrator of God, if you're a teacher of truth. You are there to represent another choice that they've forgotten. And do you know just your simple presence is a reminder whether you say anything to them or not, just being around your friends and relatives and partners, thinking the truth, remembering that you are spirit, remembering that you're here to demonstrate love, remembering you remembering that you're not a victim of the world that you see. Your simple presence is a reminder. So what do you do when you're around people who are unconscious of the truth? Well, your thoughts ask for the right to question what that person has accepted as true. So they may be complaining, they may be seeing themselves as a victim, they may be getting upset even with you, but in your thoughts, you wanna question what that person has accepted as true. So in your mind, you're not agreeing with their victim thoughts, with their anger thoughts because you are a messenger of God. You are a teacher of God, which is a teacher of love, which means you are a what? You are a messenger of love. 
So as a messenger of love, as a teacher of God, you are a symbol. You are here to be a symbol of salvation. You are here to be a symbol of peace, a symbol of sanity, a symbol of love. So when you're around people who don't know the truth, who are upset, blaming, angry, feeling separate, then you ask the person for forgiveness for God's child in their own name. So in your mind, you ask that person for forgiveness. Do you know that the Course in Miracles, the Course in Miracles says forgiveness is true perception. It is correct perception. So forgiveness is another term for true perception. It's, a, it's, a, it's another way of saying correct perception. So you're going to, in your mind, ask for correct perception in the name of the child of God. I'm just putting the course in miracles. I'm just doing the course in miracles in plain language because sometimes people get too, in my 40 years of teaching and learning the course, people get ca too caught up in the form that the course is written in and they lose sight of the content that the course is sharing. So, so don't get hung up on the Christian terminology. Don't get hung up on the masculine terminology. That's not important. What's important is what is it telling us? It's telling you that when you're around your friends and relatives and partners who don't know that they are creators, they've forgotten that they are not victims, they've forgotten that they are the one that's creating the way that they're seeing things and experiencing things, your presence can be a reminder. And in your thoughts, you're going to ask for the right to do what? You're going to ask for the right to question what that person has accepted as true. You are a messenger of love. That means you are a demonstrator of God. A demonstrator of God is a messenger of love. And the Course says his teachers are the symbols of salvation. And salvation means right-mindedness. So you are there to think correctly, even if they are not thinking correctly. <clears throat> now, remember I said you are there to think correctly. Notice I keep saying think. Because you are supposed to ask the Holy Spirit uh, what it is you should say to a person and you're supposed to ask the Holy Spirit if you are to say anything to a person at all. So the course, according to the Course in Miracles, you ask God, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? Who do you want me to say it to? So in most cases, you probably will be silent. Would probably be the smartest way for you to be, especially around a person who adamantly doesn't believe that they created what's going on in their experience. But what you're really doing, what are you doing for real? What the Course in Miracles says, they stand for the alternative. You stand for the other way of looking at things. There are only two ways of looking at things. Looking at things through the eyes of fear or looking at things through the eyes of love. So you are to stand for love. You are here to stand for the alternative. You are here to be a symbol of peace. So when you, so what do you do when you come around people? Well, the Course in Miracles says, with God's word in their minds, they come in benediction. So what does it mean to come to a person in benediction? Remember, when you are teaching, when you are learning the Course in Miracles, you don't have to try to figure out what the Course in Miracles means. The Course in Miracles tells you every sentence it explains. Like for instance, it says. You stand for the alternative. Okay, what does it mean to stand for the alternative? It means that you have the truth in your mind. If, you are, if you're studying, if you're focusing on the truth, if you're studying the course, then you have God's word in your mind. You have the truth in your mind. So with the truth in your mind, you come in benediction. What does it mean to come in benediction? It means that you didn't come to heal the sick. You didn't, you, you, you didn't come to heal that person that's upset. You didn't come to heal that person that's projecting and blaming. You are there to remind them of the remedy. So why are you in relationships with the people in your life right now as a demonstrator of truth, as a demonstrator of love? It says, when you come to remind them of the remedy, God, the creator, has already given them. So that's what I'm doing as a teacher, right? I'm not here to try to heal you. I'm here to remind you of the remedy that God has already given you. The Course in Miracles is a remedy. 
the teachings of A Course in Miracles, these teachings are a remedy. The truth comes in many forms. For some people, the form of A Course in Miracles is the way that they are going to wake up to who they truly are. The Course in Miracles is just one form of the universal curriculum. The Course in Miracles is definitely the path for some people, and A Course in Miracles is definitely not the path for some people. Some people, The Course in Miracles, it's not their path and will not be their path. For some people, and you know who you are, The Course in Miracles is your spiritual path. So how can you tell if The Course in Miracles is your spiritual path? You keep studying it regardless of how much resistance comes up. You keep studying it regardless of how much resistance or confusion or disorientation or just simply not understanding it comes up. For some reason, you still find yourself studying it. You still find yourself focusing in on it. A true Course in Miracles student is a person who will not stop studying it and focusing in on it no matter how much resistance comes up. So, so when the Course in Miracles says that you are not, you are, you didn't come to heal the sick, but to remind them of the remit, of the remedy that God has already given them. So, what is it that you need to remember as a teacher of God, as a healer of God? What do you need to remember with your family and friends and coworkers and the people that you are around? You ought to remember that it's not your hands that heal. It's not going to be your hands that heal. It's not really your voice that's speaking the word of God and the word of truth. See, it's not really, it's not really my voice that's speaking the word of God. Uh, it's really God, truth, speaking through my body to you. I did not create the Course in Miracles. I did not write the Course in Miracles. So the truth is... When, when I'm sharing with you, it's really not my voice that you're listening to. My voice is the voice that grew up in the world exactly like you. So it's not going to be your voice that speaks the word of God. It's not going to really be your voice that's speaking the truth, even though it'll sound like your voice, because what you're really sharing with people is a wisdom that's greater than your wisdom. So as a teacher of God, as a demonstrator of love, they merely give what has been given them. So I'm giving to you what the Course in Miracles has given to me. I'm giving to you what Jesus of the Course in Miracles has given to me. Uh, the voice that channeled the Course in Miracles claims to be the voice of Jesus, giving us the correct perception of his teachings. Whether you believe that or not is not really important. What's really important is to use the ideas that, that Jesus is giving through the Course in Miracles and then let the use of the ideas show you whether or not the ideas are true. So what do you do with the people around you who are in anguish and upset and victim consciousness, who don't know the truth? Well, very gently. How? Very gently. What did it say? Very gently. You call to your brothers to turn away from death, turn away from pain. You call to the people around you to turn away from death. Now, the Course in Miracles says brothers, a brother is an equal. So another term for brothers is equals. A brother is an equal. A brother has nothing to do with sexual gender. When the court says brothers, it's talking about you are my equal and I am your equal. So what do you say very gently in your mind in most cases? What do you say? Behold, you son of God, what life can offer you. So how would you say it in plain language? In your mind, you're going, I want you to see, you child of innocent child of love. I want you to, I want you to see what life can offer you, what real life, what a happy life can offer you. Would you choose sickness in place of what life can offer you? Would you choose lack in place of what abundance can offer you? Would you choose separation in place of what union can offer you? Would you choose conflict in place of what peace could offer you? Would you choose sickness in place of what health can offer you? Would you choose the ego in place of what Holy Spirit can offer you? Very gently, in your mind, you call to your equals. You tell them, I want you to turn away from death. And in your mind, you go, in your mind, you go, Behold, you child of God, 
what life can offer you. Behold, you child of God, you child of love. Behold what life can offer you. Would you choose sickness in place of this? Now, what is it that you will never consider, never think about when you become an advanced teacher of God? Well, not once, not once do the advanced teacher of God, not once does a truth teacher consider the forms of sickness in which their brother believes. So it, it's not about if it's COVID or if it's a headache or if it's somebody got robbed or it's not the form of the sickness, that it's a cold, that it's a flu, that it's a lack of money, that it's a relationship thing they're upset about. When you really wake up to the truth, you don't even consider the form, the form of the thing that the person is upset about. I'll say that again. As you begin to become more conscious, you don't even deal with the different forms of the problem. Uh, because if you focus on the form of what the person is going through, then you will forget that everything that a person goes through that upsets them has the same purpose, that they're not really different. So the real problem is that you have to seek for God's voice in that person. You have to learn how to, in your mind, seek for the voice of love in that person. The Course in Miracles says in paragraph three, it says, uh, not once do the advanced teachers of God consider the, forms, consider the forms of sickness in which their brother believes. To do this, to do what? To consider the forms of sickness in which their brother believes is to forget. To forget what? That all of the forms of sickness, all of the forms of unhappiness have the same purpose. Any kind of unhappiness has the same purpose. I don't care what kind of form of unhappiness that a person is going through. It's all serving the same purpose. The purpose isn't really different, which is to make them think that they're separate from happiness, separate from joy, separate from God. So what do you do as a teacher of God? What do you do as a demonstrator of love? Well, you seek for God's voice. You seek for the Holy Spirit in this person who would so deceive themselves. So how is the unhappy person deceiving themselves? They're deceiving themselves. They're believing that a child of God can suffer. If you believe that what you really are can suffer, you are deceiving yourself. What you really are cannot suffer. What you really are cannot suffer. Who you really are as a child of God, as spirit, cannot suffer. So what do you do in your mind when you're dealing with a person that is asleep to the truth and they feel like a victim and they're unhappy and they're in lack or fear or any kind of sickness? What do you do? You have to remind that person. What is it that you must remind that person of? You have to remind that person that they did not make themselves. You didn't make yourself. You didn't create yourself. You did not create yourself. You didn't create yourself. Your friends did not create themselves. Your partner did not create themselves. There's not a being that's in existence that created themselves. So a conscious person is a person that realizes that. When you become conscious, you realize you were created by an infinitely loving creator and that you are not a body, that you have a body and your body is your means of communicating and joining in this world, but you are not your body. So, <clears throat> So when people around you are upset and angry and feel like they're a victim of some painful situation that they're experiencing or sickness, then you remind them that they didn't make themselves. And if you didn't make yourself, what would be the truth about you? you the truth about you would be you are still the way that God created you. God created you as mind, as consciousness, as love, as spirit. And God created you as loved. And you're still that way. You are still the infinitely powerful, love, loved, loving, and lovable being that you were created by God. So when you're around people who think that there are bodies, bodies that die one day, bodies that suffer for one reason or another, when you're around people who think that they are victims of whatever they're going through, then 
you want to remind that person in your mind, in your mind, in your mind, unless you're absolutely told by spirit to say, to tell them, which is going to be rare, actually, because when people are most upset, that's when they're least likely to be willing to listen to the truth and listen to another way of looking at things. So even if you were going to try to verbally help a person, you would have to do that after they achieve some level of peace, enough to hear, uh, enough to even hear what you got to say. So in most cases, it's going to be what I'm saying to you, you're supposed to be doing in your mind. Because minds are joined. So since minds are joined, because we are all one, then that means my mind is connected to your mind and it's all one mind. So what comes into my mind is actually in your mind because it's just one mind. So if, if I believe there's only one mind and that mind is joined, then I can remind you in my mind. And what is it that I'm going to remind you of in my mind? I'm going to remind you that you didn't make yourself and you remain and you are still the way that God and love created you. You are going to recognize that illusions can have no effect. What does it mean when you hear the statement, illusions can have no effect? The Course in Miracles defines illusions as fears and illusions as false ideas, ideas that are not true. So you need to recognize that the false ideas that that person has can have no effect on reality and their false ideas and fears can have no effect on who they really are, who they really are. Now, I'm not saying that a person's ideas can have effect on who they think they are, but I'm saying that who you really are cannot be affected by your ego or anybody else's ego or false ideas. So I want you to just take a minute. We're gonna take about 10 seconds. I want you to just breathe. You didn't make yourself you did not make yourself. You didn't create yourself. You didn't create yourself. You have a creator. You had a creator. You did not make yourself. 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 You were created. 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 You didn't create yourself. You were created. You didn't create yourself. You are as God created you. You are as God created you. You are as love created you. You are as love created you. You are as your creator created you. You are as your creator created you. You are as God created you and not what you would make of yourself. So you must recognize that false ideas that people have can have no real effect. So what are you going to do around your friends and your relatives and your partners, anybody that's upset, anyone that's seeing themselves as a victim? It says the truth in their minds reaches out to the truth in the minds of their brothers so that illusions are not reinforced. The truth in your mind reaches out to the truth in the minds of your equals. Notice it says the truth in your mind reaches out to the truth. So the truth in me is going to reach out to the truth in you. I'm going to remind myself that your ego can't have re any real effect on what's true about you and what's real about you. Then I'm going to let the truth in my mind reach out to the truth in your mind so that illusions, which are false ideas, are not reinforced. So how do you keep false ideas from being reinforced. How do you make sure anger, guilt, grievances, and misperceptions are not reinforced? How do you make sure that erroneous thinking is not reinforced? You let the truth in your mind reach out to the truth 
in their minds. So for me as a Course in Miracles student, that would mean I'm going to let the Course in Miracles thoughts in my mind reach out to the truth, which is the Course in Miracles thoughts in the other person's mind. Because everyone has the truth in their minds. Every single solitary being on the face of this earth has the truth in their minds. It's hidden. It may be hidden. The truth may be blocked. They may not be aware of the truth, but everyone, everyone has love in them. Everyone has the truth in them. They may have uh, repressed it. They may be so deep into their fear and anger and separation that they are violent or uh, 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 depressed or angry or attacked. But behind everyone's ego is the truth. So you know, remember that. Every world leader, every politician, every bank robber, every whatever murderer, whoever is in this world, no matter how their ego, their misperceptions are making them behave, there's a part of their mind that knows the truth. There's a part of them that has love in them. So you've got to let the truth in your mind, you're recognizing that truth, you got to let that reach out to the truth in their minds so that that fear, that illusion, that anger, that guilt is not reinforced. So they are brought to the truth. You got to take your false ideas to the truth. You got to take your ego thoughts to the truth. You got to take your misperceptions to the truth and not try to make your misperceptions and your false ideas true. You take your misperceptions and false ideas to the truth. When you take your ego, your misperceptions, and your false ideas to the truth, what happens to your fear? What happens to your anger? What happens to your lack? What happens to your grievance? What happens to your unhappiness when you take it to the truth? When you take those things to the truth, they are dispelled. That's how you get rid of them. So all of your false ideas, all of that person's unhappiness, all that of that person's misperceptions, all of their illusions, they are dispelled. Not by the will of somebody else, but by the union of one will with itself. What do you mean by the union of one will with itself? See, when I see my mind as you name it with yours, when I see myself as wanting the peace of God, knowing that you also want the peace of love. When I recognize that the truth in my mind is connected to the truth in your mind, then we are dispelling our separation and we're dispelling our false ideas through the union of the one mind with itself, which is the same as saying through the union of the one will with itself. So what is your function as a teacher of God? What is your function as a teacher of love? Your function is to see no will, which of course also defines as mind. Your function is to see no mind as separate from your mind. Your function is to see no will as separate from your will. So I want peace. I, my will is perfect happiness. The Course in Miracles says God's will for you is complete and perfect happiness. So I see your will as wanting total and complete happiness. I don't see your mind as separate from my mind. And you are not to see your mind or will as separate from mine. And we are not supposed to see our will, our mind, as separate from God's will and mind. So what is your function? Your function is to see no will as separate from your will. Your function is to see no mind as separate or different from your mind. So what is my function? My function is to see your mind as joined with my mind. My function is to see us as having one mind. What is your function? Your function is the exact same thing. To see no will as separate from yours and not to see our will as separate from God's. And then what is God's will according to the Course in Miracles? According to the Course in Miracles, God's will for us is what? Complete and perfect happiness. Now, if you listen to what I'm saying, if you haven't, 
if your ego hasn't made you tune out and go unconscious, if your old programming and conditioning hasn't blocked out what I'm sharing from the course, then you will realize that in that I just gave you um, very powerful, very simple instructions about how to handle other people who don't know the truth, who are believing that they are victims and that they are not the creators of their experience. In other words, you were just told how to deal with the average person in a way that would be peaceful for you and them. I'm going to do a quick review of what I just said so that you can remember it, so that you can have an easier experience. I'm a full-time teacher, of a, so I'm going to do a quick recap, so stick around. I, I am a full-time teacher of A Course in Miracles. If you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation or donation, then you can uh, go to my website, www.earlpurdy.com, earlpurdy.com. You can also use Venmo, the Cash App, PayPal, and Zelle. All you need is my email address. My email address is earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com, earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com. I'm also available for one-on-one -on -one coaching counseling sessions to show you exactly how you can apply the principles of A Course in Miracles to any situation that you're going through right now that's causing you any form of distress or pain or weary. I call them clarity sessions, clarity sessions, clarity sessions. Go to my website, earlpurdy.com, and look under the clarity sessions tab, and it will explain what I do on a one-on-one -on -one in detail. And you can self-book a session with me right from my right from my website. I'm also a professional astrologer and numerologist and have been for over 40 years. It was actually what led me to A Course in Miracles was my study of astrology and numerology. So don't judge people's paths. Uh, and so I'm available in that capacity for people who are open and receptive to it. On Thursdays, 7 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time, I do Hardcore Course in Miracles on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. On Sundays at 1 p.m. Mountain Time on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook, I do another Facebook Live A Course in Miracles class. And if you live in Denver, Colorado, you can attend the class in person at 1555 Race Street, 80206, 1555 Race Street in Denver. Ah, it feels so good to be with you. It feels so good to share this. I'm trying to see if there's anything I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, uh, I have hundreds of classes on YouTube and hundreds of classes on Facebook and hundreds of classes, audio and video on my website that you can listen to and watch free of charge, even though I appreciate donations. I'm here to be truly helpful. I'm here to represent him who sent me. I don't have to worry about what to say or what to do because he who sent me will direct me. And so that's what the Courts and Miracles is teaching me. So, so, let's, so let's do a quick review of what we heard because we were given very specific instructions I'm so grateful for you. Please share these videos. Please share these videos. Please share these videos. So if a person must change their mind in order to be healed, what do you do? Can you change a person's mind for them? Certainly not. Certainly not. Certainly not. For those who are already willing to change their mind, do you know that you don't have a function except to be rejoiced with them? So everyone around you that's already trying to change their mind, 
you don't have any function but to rejoice with them because anyone that wants to change their mind and be a demonstrator of truth and a demonstrator of love, they are also teachers of God with you. But do you know that you have a more specific function? You have a more specific function for those who don't understand what healing is. People who don't understand what healing is are people who don't realize they've chosen sickness, they've chosen lack, they've chosen whatever unhappiness that they're going through right now. They don't realize that and they're not open-minded about it. They believe that their body and external circumstances tell them what to do and dictate their experience and they obey. People who believe that they are victims who are programmed by what the world teaches, they don't have any idea how insane it is to believe that you have nothing to say or no part that you're playing in what's happening to you in your life. If you even suspected that you were responsible, if a person even suspected that they were responsible for how they see things and how they experience things, if they really, really suspected it, they would be healed. But the average person, they don't suspect anything. To them, the separation is quite real. To regular people who believe that their bodies and believe that they're separate, to them the separation and the differences are quite real. So what do you do? What is your role? Well, when you're around people who don't recognize the truth that their thoughts are creative, your presence is a reminder. Just being around you is helping to heal them. Your thoughts are asking for the right to question what they have accepted as true. You are a messenger. You are a teacher of love. You ask for forgiveness in that person's name. You say, I want you to see things correctly. I want you to see things correctly. You stand for the alternative. You stand for the alternative. That's why you're around your partners and your friends and your relatives, because you're supposed to stand for another way of thinking. You have the truth in your mind. You've been studying the truth. You have God's word in your mind. And so you come in benediction. You don't come to heal them. You come to remind them. Remind them of what? You come to remind them of the remedy that God has already given them. It's not going to be your hands that heal. It's not going to be your voice that's speaking the word of God, even though it's coming through you and your thoughts. You want to give what's been given to you. In your mind, you want to give what's given to you. You want to share the truth that you're studying. But how can you share the truth of the course if you are not reading it and studying it? If you are not reading the course, then how are you going to share the thoughts with your brothers and sisters who need your help? If you're not doing the workbook lessons, then how are you going to allow the Course in Miracles to operate in your life? Because it's through studying the material and doing the workbook lessons that you experience the miracles of healing that the Course in Miracles promises. So how do you call to your brothers and sisters? You call to them very gently and you say to them, behold, you child of God, what life can offer you. Would you choose sickness and this problem and this pain in place of this? What is it that not once do the advanced teachers of God do? Don't even con really consider the form of the upset that the person believes. Because if you focus in on the form of the upset, you're going to forget that they have the same purpose. All upsets have the purpose of making a person forget the truth and think that they are separate from God. All upsets, they have the purpose of helping to deceive a person so that they forget that they are the unlimited child of God. So how do you help them? How do you help them? When you remind them, what do you remind them of? You remind them that they didn't make themselves and must remain as God created them. They didn't make themselves and must remain as God created them. That means all of their fears. Do you know 
that that means their problem, their fears, really can have no real effect on who they really are. But they have forgotten that. So what do you do? You let the truth, you let the truth in your mind reach out to the truth in their minds so that false ideas, illusions are not reinforced. You got these negative, fearful thoughts. You feel like you are a victim. I'm not going to believe that. I'm not going to see you as a victim. I'm not going to see you as a body. I'm not going to see you as weak. I'm not going to see you as helpless. That's my job as a teacher of God, is to remember who you are when you've forgotten. And that's your job, your function with everyone around you. You let the truth in your mind reach out to the truth in their mind so that the ego is not reinforced, so that the false ideas and fears are not reinforced. You want to take the false ideas and bring them to the truth. Take the fears and bring them to the truth so that they can be dispelled. When you apply the truth, the truth to whatever you are going through that's causing you sickness and pain, and you apply the truth to whatever is causing another person to go through sickness and pain, then that's how it is dispelled. The, the problem and the fear and the upset is dispelled by the union of the one mind with itself. And so what is your function as God's teachers? Your function is to see nobody's mind as disconnected from your mind, to see no one's will as separate from your own will. No longer see our will as separate from God's will. And what is God's will? What is the Creator's will? God's will for you is complete happiness. God's will for you is perfect happiness, perfect love, perfect joy. That is the only thing that your creator wants for you. Now it must be the only thing that you want for you. Mighty companion, listen to this at least four times. There were very specific instructions that I gave from the Course in Miracles. And the instruction was about how you express yourself with other people on the path and how you should express yourself and what your function is with people who don't believe that they are the creators of their experience. Regular people. All right, mighty companion, you are blessing. Please share this video. I have tons of videos on YouTube, on Facebook, and on my website. Repetition, repetition. You are awesome. You are beautiful. And remember, you did not create. You did not make yourself. So you remain exactly as God created you. Loved, loving, and lovable. Mighty companion, may the course be with you. And I look at all your comments and I appreciate your comments. See you next time.